Hey everybody, it's Taylor with Boyce and Grove, and today we're going to show you how to make this tabletop easel that folds up. Let's get into it. Before I was ever a maker or a woodworker, I was an artist. I've been doing art for as long as I can remember. Aww. So today I'm going to tie two of those passions together. I'm going to show you how to use woodworking to make a tabletop easel. To make this easel, I'm going to be using three one by twos that I picked up at the local hardware store. These are pre-cut to six feet and they are pre-sanded, so that's a lot less work for us to do. All we have to do is cut them to length. A lot of the pieces for this project can be pre-cut. I'm gonna start out with six 12 inch pieces, four 14 inch pieces, two seven inch pieces, and two nine inch pieces. To make the adjustable upper clamp, I'm going to be making a track, and to do this I'm going to be using two of the 14 inch pieces. The first 14 inch piece I'm going to split down the middle at a 45 degree angle. The second piece I'm going to cut a 45 degree angle on each side of the board to create a type of triangle. That way the triangle can sit between the two angle pieces in somewhat of a track. Two of the 14 inch pieces will be the sides of our frame. I'm going to drill holes for the bolts two inches from the end in the center of the board. I also pre-drilled the holes for the bolts in the two nine inch pieces. I'm using both screws and glue for my assembly, but this is kind of unnecessary. It's a bit of a belt and suspender situation. You don't need to use both if you don't want to. To prevent any cracking or splitting in the wood, I'm making sure to pre-drill and countersink all the holes for the screws. We've just passed our one year anniversary of being live on YouTube and we really want to know your opinion. Are there certain types of projects that you would like to see more of? Or are there certain projects that you would like to see us tackle? Just let us know in the comments below. Now personally, I like the way the natural wood looks on this easel, and it's gonna be cool when it gets a little paint spatters on it and everything from my projects. But if you'd rather have some color or something, then you can go ahead and paint or stain yours. I would really suggest doing this before your final assembly. For the pivoting parts, I am using quarter inch bolts with flat washers and lock nuts. When attaching the pivoting parts together, I made sure to put a flat washer in between the two pieces of wood. That way it'll pivot nice and smooth without the wood binding up. I made sure to only hand tighten the lock nuts for each time that I was trying it out. That way I could easily disassemble it to make adjustments.
after a dry assembly, I realized that the back legs were swinging up and hitting the bolt heads to the adjustable rod part. So I decided to disassemble everything and countersink those holes so that the bolt heads will sit flush with the wood and the back legs can fold all the way up nice and tight. As an afterthought, I decided to use some magnets to hold the legs in place. This wasn't in the original plan, but it actually ended up turning out really well. the adjustable rod part, I am using a 3 8 inch dowel that I picked up at the local hardware store for about $2. The dowel that I used fit so tightly that there was no need for me to use any glue or attachments. In order to make the adjustable bar part sit flush when it's folded together, I ended up having to cut some notches in the top of each end of the frame. In order to do this, I had to remove two of the screws from the frame on the 12 inch piece. I later replaced those screws with a little bit shorter screws. I also ended up having to notch out the track that I built for the dowel to sit flat. To make the locking mechanism for the sliding clamp, I'm using a threaded insert along with a bolt with a star knob head. You can get both of these on Amazon. I will leave links in the description below. To keep that top clamp from shifting or wobbling around, I made sure to put the track pieces really close together. But in doing so, I didn't leave enough room for that adjustable bolt to slide down in the middle between the two pieces. So to fix this, I just use a straight edge with a sharp blade to cut off the very edge of each track and left just wide enough gap for that bolt to slide down in between the middle. As a finishing touch, I added some wax to the track of the sliding clamp. That way it would slide up and down really smoothly. To keep the easel from sliding around, I put a couple feet on the bottom. I ordered mine from Amazon. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below. tabletop easel is finished and I'm really happy with the way that it came out. Um, I, there were a few things that I added along the way that I wasn't expecting to and they made a really big difference in the functionality for this. Uh, waxing this rail right here, it basically just slides by itself now. It's so nice and smooth and easy to work with. Another idea that I had along the way that I wasn't expecting to do was making it so that all this sits flat and adding those magnets. They hold nice and tight, keep it all nice, sleek and thin so you can put it behind a doorway or under a bed when you're storing it. Really nice feature, wasn't expecting to do it, but it really came out nice. All in all, this wasn't the quickest or easiest project, but I really enjoyed doing it and it was a definite learning curve with how to figure out all the functionality of this and make it as nice and compact as possible. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it. If you want to see all the other projects we've done or that we're doing, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And we would love to hear in the comments below what you thought of this 
or if you have any ideas of how to improve this easel, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. Be safe and have a great day.